Hi guys and ladies, welcome back to the channel. My name is Diseba Matieti and on this video we're going to be continuing the conversation from the last time where we are talking about the different type of analysts. A lot have reached out to me to say where do I go, where do I start to becoming an analyst. After a few research we found out that there's a different type of analyst and we are going through a list of 60 analysts that are out there just for you to know which other analyst positions could you pursue. And on top of that, we're going to be looking at what is much more common. This video, we are listing the last five, the last five of the list. If you haven't watched video one, video two, and video three, might be a good time for you to go back and review yeah, any of those videos. But stay tuned for the rest of the video. Just before we start off, let's just look at once again the different type of analysts and what they do. First thing is an analyst is someone who gathers data just by definition. He studies the data or she studies the data and then produces conclusions based on what they find on the data itself. And this type of people who we call analysts do this to find patterns within the data and make meaningful decisions and changes based on what they learn. There's no particular way that says because you're an analyst you're supposed to be working in banking or in insurance or you're supposed to be working in the public sector. You can really work in a wide range of industries helping to improve efficiency and make strategic decisions. But just on uh, understanding just on a common basis what is an analyst and what can you do. So just continue with our list we are looking at a different type of analyst. The first one that we're going to look at here is a computer system analyst. It's a computer system analyst. So they look at the systems, especially not just the, uh, any other system, but the one that relates to the computers. If you have a particular software, a particular something, this is the person that can actually look at it. And this type of people, computer uh, system analyst, they study the current computer system of an organization and find ways to improve efficiencies and costs. So if you have something else that has to do with new computer system coming into place, old one being rationalized or simplified, these are the best people that can tell you ways to go about it and where to get the new system and type of a thing which one performs much better and stuff like that. Computer system analysts understand the goals and needs of a business and they develop a plan for how the latest technology could assist like i said if because we all know that making a, an error buying the wrong software or software that will not be able to cater for where your, your strategy is taking you in a few years might be detrimental and having the people like uh, computer software system analysts can sit down and say, hang on a second, let's just look at where your strategy is going. You are planning to enroll how many 1 million clients, this system will not be working out for you. Even though it's user friendly, might not be working out for you. You might have to start enrolling or starting to purchase an enterprise resourcing system like any other ERP system that allows you for when your company start to scale up and become bigger. Just looking at the salaries in dollars because we're looking at uh, using indeed.com which is US based for this time. We realized that there were about 4,000 uh, computer system analysts that went into the website and they declared you know how much you know based on trust how much do they earn. The average salary is about 80.6 uh, 80,673 thousand dollars a year i'm just putting it yearly if you're in a different country you can just do the exchange rate like here in south africa we're sitting at about 18 uh, rent to the dollar right now and there are also uh, other ones in the same field that are looking at 121 and i think the lowest percent set was about 53,000 um, that they were in uh, as a as a computer system analyst very very quite important people that actually just picks one system and they understand that system top to bottom. The second one that we're going to be looking at type of people is the technical specialist or the technical analyst. So these are the people, as, as it says itself, they know the technical know-how, not just the high level, how the system go, but they can actually tell you how the things really work out because they have intense technical knowledge. 
So a technical uh, analyst is responsible for communicating technical knowledge within the system. So you can imagine that most when you're sitting in X course, you're sitting in men course, you're sitting in all these um, boardrooms, people in there might have very, very good business knowledge and they need people like technical analysts or technical specialists to come in and say, for you to enroll that strategy, you're gonna need 17 uh, um, uh, data warehouses or you might have to start looking at migrating to the cloud type of a thing and they will talk about all the technical needs that are required in there. They interview people within the business to better understand the project needs and communicate technical requirements to the business management. Like I said, all they have to do is to find out what is the goal standard and say this is the goal thread. Everybody else that have actually went to um, you know, enroll SAP for instance, I'm just using SAP as an example, they bought all these other modules and the size of the business was this big. An hour one, they buy all of this, so, um, and, and, and this is what we're gonna need to do. What are the people doing on the ground? Technical analysts, they also ensure that management and technical teams have the same understanding on various uh, requirements. And you know, if you worked in a big organization, at one point you realize that the management, management expectation with the technical deliverance, at one point it starts to converge, it starts to go diverge, I meant to say. And you want them to come together. Um, and these are the people that are very, very important for making sure that they come together. And to show that importance, you can just look at how much they are earning based on 1,500 people that actually volunteered their salaries on Indeed.com, $94,000. $94,000 with the highest being $140,000. I know because we had this uh, technical specialist um, in South Africa that will be sitting at 2.53 million. This is just manager of South, people that really, really know what's required for you to plug into a system. And they work hand in hand at one point with uh, organizational architects. Because the organi uh, organizational architects, they, they need the technical specialist know-how so in order for, for you to be here you need to be hectically embedded in the technical stem uh, uh, point of view it's not just uh, you understanding one system but this one is like understanding multiple systems and how they come together and what impact could they do most of most of the people might be strong technically based but they don't know uh, how management or how do you uh, present your findings to management so these are quite important people and the salaries are there to show that it, it is really a challenging role. The next role that we're looking at, the third one, is a management consultant or for better word, we can call it a management uh, analyst. This, like we said, they just don't look at what computer system or the technical things look like. They are uh, study the organizations and propose solution to improve efficiency. So they will say, in company A, they do this. In company B, they do this. In company three, they do this. Um, just a week ago, I had a, another assignment where I think one of the banks had uh, released their financial uh, results. And I was being asked, how do they do it? What culture do they have? What um, system do they have in place? What, what does their uh, standard operating procedures look like? What is their strategy looking like? And all of that we can find from, um, I don't know if you guys have read the, the, the financial statements, but all of that is disclosed over there. So you have to take the, your company's financial statement and you say, we have made this much headline earnings, and then you put the competitor next to it. And then as the management goes line by line, they can see already where things are going. You don't have to interpret them. You just have to bring them together but you bring them together, you group them. When, when you're talking about losses ratio, you're putting CLRs together. When you're talking about uh, uh, things that are sales related, then you're putting about number of accounts, digitally active clients next to each other. So that when the, the managing executive of sales sees that, he can talk to that slide. Managing executive of, you know, whatever the case is, they can talk to that slide. So that was a, a quite a nice project that one of the, the heads ask me. They are typically external consultants who provide an objective view of the company. Duties includes interviewing employees, uh, reviewing current processes, 
and finance and making recommendation to meet the company's goal. Like I said, that small example that I have given you, I was not being asked by my uh, current team, but I was being asked by somebody else who was sitting in sales to say, I'm stuck, how do I go about doing this? And I said, okay, this is, this is the number, this is the information that you have. Take it to DIVCO, which is Divisional Committee uh, of Executives. Go take it there. You can decide on, on whatever strategies that you want to take from there. In terms of the money, 2,000 people um, disclose how much they're earning here. The highest being 112, and the average salary is about 74,000, about 75,000 that you're taking home uh, as a management consultant. This is where the consulting companies are coming in. Most of the people in those consulting companies are really um, management analysts. This is the companies by the likes of Deloitte, Accenture, uh, PwC, KPMG, you name them. They are all over. Others are, are doing the same thing probably, which is a borderline between legal and management consulting and whatever. So, but if you're looking at it just, uh, just uh, giving advice to management, then it be, you become a management analyst. Mostly qualitative, uh, while the other ones maybe might, mostly might be quantitative data. This one you're looking at qualitative data all the time. Say, mm, what do we, with all of this, what do we thinking about? The first one that we're looking at is the business system analyst. The business system analyst, I know, more or less close to uh, the system analyst, but this one they don't look at just the software but they look at the whole business. They study the procedures and the reports and the potential challenges to management. Very, very closely related to what we have spoken about first with the system analyst who just looks at the system. And the other one that we had spoken about was the technical analyst who just talks about the technical side of things. This one, unlike the, the number one that we spoke about, which is the computer uh, system analyst, the business system analyst looks at the whole business um, and studies the whole business procedure to say, okay, you move from here, you take it from there as the business together. Like I normally use the word organizational architecture. You're the one who's building up the organization and understanding how things link up together. They also identify effective solutions related to business software and computer procedures. Business systems analysts may also design new computer programs by studying the current employee behavior and uh, or project requirements. So that's where it is. They don't have to be uh, technical people in terms of coding, but they might have that ability. Um, like most of us have studied informatics, we've studied IT, uh, but we're not coding all the time. But we are also analysts, but in a different uh, way, like I said. Sometimes we might be in the management side of things, sometimes we might be just in, in the business system analyst or what I would like this one is mostly related to remember when you spoke to business analyst and we said there's the three different types you could be in finance you could be in operational you could be in IT this one is mostly like putting um, the business analysts that are more in within um, operations but you're just not looking at you know the operations of people moving up and down which is non-system related this one has got everything else to do with procedures are you following the right procedures so they are very close to each other but not close to each other in terms of the money there were 4100 people which disclosed to say in terms of the money they are getting about 89,000 a year with the highest being 134 so you can see it's quite lucrative but also there's a huge gap between the salaries because the lowest is about hundreds uh, is about sixty thousand a year so it's a it depends on how what the size of your organization is to become a business analyst the last one that we're looking at is called a program analyst a program analyst you can just think about it you have a portfolio of of, of, um, of projects that you have to do and then putting them together you can call it a portfolio but when you put portfolios together it's now called a program Program analyst inspect business program and recommends ways to improve them, not just the project themselves or the portfolio of project or group of project, but the whole program uh, in the business. And they say, okay, this is what we could do and this is how we can improve it. They implement data collection and management techniques, participate in strategic planning and document program changes. So you can just imagine, at one point the nitty gritty start to fall off, but now you're looking at the bigger picture 
and you are analyzing at that level. So um, in terms of the money, 1,800 people came over and they told us how much they are looking at. Average salary is about 80,800, about 81,000, with the highest being 125 and the lowest being 52. What does it mean? As the last video out of the three, you could see here what is much more common. What is common is you collecting data. When, when we talk about data, it's not just the qualitative quantitative data, which is the numbers one, two, three, four, five, which is numbers, but sometimes you're collecting qualitative data, which is based on this company does this, this company does that. Let's do the comparison. Uh, Gold Standard says this, we are here, let's do the comparison. It's mostly qualitative, which is data that is not based on numbers, but it's data that you can compare that's based on logic, and that's the basis of, of analysis is looking at data and being able to find meaning within the data. What does the data tell us to do? What is the meaning of this data? And once you've done that, you are able to give out your recommendation to say, my recommendation in the form of a slide, my recommendation in the form of a memo, my recommendation in the form of an article is we need to change the system or we need to continue with the system or we need to change our sales strategy or we need to revise our budgeting. So that's what you get, um, that's, that's for us guys. I hope you enjoyed this few videos that we did explaining about analysis. If you're still not sure, I can go into more detail with each um, uh, type of analysis. Like the thing is if I'm looking at a program analyst here, I can go into detail, find out what the job um, specification or the job description looks like and what is required so that we just don't take the money and say oh they earn a lot of money maybe you might you might be uh, eligible to apply for that and then we can even talk about a few things about the experience that's needed uh, and who knows we might even have to reach out to one or two people who are in that particular role to actually tell us what does it look like what does a day in a life look like I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like what I'm doing, please feel free to support the channel by subscribing and you know giving patronage to the channel and talking about it to other people. If you are new to the channel and you would want to hear some more stay, stay put so that the next video you can be able to watch, we'll talk again on the next video. Cheers guys.